A huge storm will be coming to the United States over the next few days, and this is going to bring a big severe weather event tomorrow across parts of the southern and central plains and even back through the Midwest. And then after this storm, we are going to be dealing with a very active weather pattern in November where there will be several other large storms that bring more severe weather, snow, and also colder weather. So let's begin with what's happening across the United States right now that will lead to this large storm as we go into tomorrow. And for the time being things are actually still relatively quiet we do have a lot of cloud cover that's been building in over the last 24 hours mostly to areas in the midwest and back through the northern plains and we're actually watching a trough that is going to develop more later today and that's going to bring several inches of snow to areas like the rocky mountains and even could bring feet of snow to some areas as there will be plenty of snowfall tonight into tomorrow morning and this storm will eventually build into a very organized trough as we go into wednesday it's going to pull a lot of moisture out out of the Gulf of Mexico, and that's going to lead to a key ingredient for tomorrow's severe weather setup, which will impact areas anywhere from the Midwest back through the Central and Southern Plains. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next couple of days, and we'll begin with today, which is tossing trampolines on Tacos Tuesday. You'll notice the risk is relatively low. We do have a marginal threat that stretches from Iowa back into parts of North Central Texas. The main concern will be hail and wind. Tomorrow, though, is a completely different story. We are talking about a much larger risk risk for severe weather. The Storm Prediction Center has outlined a marginal threat that goes all the way from Wisconsin back into central Texas, which is a very large area, by the way. We also have a slight risk, which is a more elevated risk from southwest Iowa back into parts of northern Texas. Now, I do think that there is a chance that we could see an enhanced risk of severe weather tomorrow if the computer models continue to trend the way they've been trending over the last 24 hours, is which they're basically showing more robust supercells here in parts of the central plains. Now, the biggest concerns for tomorrow will be damaging winds and large hail so if you're anywhere in the outlined areas make sure that you are prepared for that risk we could see some golf ball sized hail with a few storms and even a few storms producing damaging winds between 60 to maybe even upwards of 75 miles per hour during the daytime and even the evening tomorrow now another threat that a lot of you are going to ask about is the tornado risk and we're going to be breaking this down into detail for you here over the next few minutes but right now we do have a large area that we're watching for at least a few tornadoes anywhere from southern Iowa all the way back through North Texas is where we do have a low tornado risk. We also have a bit more of an elevated tornado risk in southern Kansas, which is around the Wichita area, and also back through central and northern Oklahoma, which does include areas like Oklahoma City. Now, overall, the tornado risk is not expected to be a full-blown tornado outbreak, at least for now, but we do think that there will at least be a couple or a few tornadoes as long as discrete supercells are able to form tomorrow. That is a little bit of a question mark, but we do think that if discrete supercells cells are able to fire, we are going to have at least a couple or a few tornadoes. One of the biggest reasons why we are concerned about tomorrow's severe weather setup is that the trough tilt is actually very different from what we were forecasting 24 to 48 hours ago, usually with less organized severe weather setups and not nearly as potent severe weather setups. We have a positively tilted trough, and that was forecasted only a day or two ago. Now we are likely to see a shortwave trough here dip down into the central plains, and it's actually going to be negatively tilted and this is going to be able to allow for a bigger moisture pull and it's also going to create more spin especially across the mid and low levels and that could create the potential for a few tornadoes tomorrow which is a concern that we do have and this is tomorrow evening look at how strong the winds are here across Kansas back through Oklahoma and Missouri in the mid levels that is definitely going to bulk that wind shear up quite a bit and we are eventually going to be talking about the potential for some rotating supercells tomorrow another key ingredient to the setup is going to be the moisture and this is something that is also higher than forecasted initially you'll notice as we go into tomorrow we are going to have plenty of moisture across the central and southern plains here's the key though to tomorrow's setup is where the triple point sets up essentially where that's going to be located we think is going to be right here in about central and southeastern kansas and within proximity of this is where i think the greatest chance for rotating supercells will be so i think southern kansas and northern oklahoma is going to be in that picture for a greater shot of a at least a couple of tornadoes. So this area near Wichita, Kansas, back closer to Oklahoma City, has the greatest risk at this point of a tornado threat, where dew points will also be into the low to mid-60s. And you'll notice this will continue to track east. I do think further to the north along this boundary here, that's where we're going to be mostly looking at a wind threat moving across areas like Iowa, Wisconsin, Missouri, even back through parts of uh, eastern Kansas. But I think large hail and also the tornado threat will definitely be more elevated, especially in central, northeastern Oklahoma, 
and back into parts of southern and eastern Kansas, and as well as maybe even western Arkansas late in the evening. And that triple point that we were just talking about matches up with the tornado parameter values very clearly as we go into Wednesday afternoon and evening. Notice this area where our highest chance essentially will be for tornadoes is again in southern Kansas and northern and central Oklahoma. However, that's not the only place that we can see tornadoes. We could still see an isolated spin up or maybe even a tornado anywhere from Texas all the way back through Iowa. So make sure that you have a tornado action plan in place and multiple ways to receive alerts. And also, we are likely to be live here on YouTube tomorrow, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified when we go live. Now let's go through the timing of severe weather, and we're going to go north to south. So we'll begin with the Midwest first, and for the most part, Wednesday, it's going to be a pretty active day, especially if you're back over in Iowa, where we are going to have several thunderstorms ongoing, mostly across that boundary, stretching from southeast Minnesota all the way back through Kansas. The main concern out of these storms will be damaging winds and hail. I wouldn't rule out an isolated tornado as far north as central Iowa, but I do think the risk is going to stay relatively low. Most, con mostly concerned about the wind threat, though, back up this direction. So Wisconsin, Iowa, Missouri, definitely be prepared for some damaging winds that will be scattered anywhere from 60 to 75 miles per hour. As we go into the evening hours, this line continues to push east through Kansas City and also through Missouri, and eventually by the overnight hours, this thing starts to fall apart as it heads towards areas like Chicago. Now, for the Central Plains, this is where we're expecting the greatest activity. Storms are expected to fire up during the late morning, mainly across Nebraska and central and northern Kansas. We'll likely not be live for this since it's just going to be mostly elevated thunderstorms that are producing wind and hail. What gets more concerning is by the afternoon, as that triple point starts to really become more organized, we are going to be watching for a greater tornado risk as we get closer to about 4, 5, 6 o'clock here in southern Kansas and as well as back up into northern Oklahoma as storms start to fire up. Now, the majority of the storms that fire up initially, I think, will still be wind and hail driven there will be a slightly elevated tornado risk but what we're going to be watching for more closely is any discrete supercells that can fire up near that triple point in southern kansas and northern and central oklahoma any of those storms that fire up there will have a better shot at producing a tornado and i wouldn't even rule out an isolated strong tornado even though it's a low risk it's definitely not zero as we go throughout the evening hours this line continues to organize mostly as a wind threat as it moves again into missouri throughout parts of oklahoma and also eventually going to towards Arkansas, and eventually as we go into the overnight hours, this starts to move into parts of northern Arkansas and southern Missouri as mostly a wind threat, but again, an isolated tornado cannot be ruled out. Back over in the southern plains, this is a bit more of a ballpark kind of guess at this point. We don't necessarily know if storms will fire in parts of southern Oklahoma or even in north Texas. However, if they are able to form, hail and wind are expected to be the main concerns. A tornado or two, though, still cannot be ruled out. It's a lower chance, though. We are going to have some cap in place, especially in North Texas, which may mean that the storms don't fire up until late in the evening, maybe as late as 11 or 12 o'clock, and that would be mostly a wind and hail threat as we go into the overnight hours. And again, a good reminder to make sure you're protecting your vehicle and make sure you're protecting any loose line items and still have a tornado action plan in place just in case. And I wish I could say that we would be done with severe weather after tomorrow, but I think we're going to have several more big severe weather events, especially during the first few weeks of November. This is what it looks like as we go into Thursday. So this trough will actually bring a little bit of snowfall to areas in the upper Midwest on Thursday. In addition to that, a low risk for severe weather will be possible from about Indiana back into the Mississippi Valley. Very low risk, though, I'd say for Thursday. That clears out as we go into Friday, and eventually by the weekend, we are right back to more storms, especially in the central and southern plains. I don't think we're going to see much severe weather on Saturday, but as we go into Monday and Tuesday of next week, that is when I think we'll have a better shot at seeing a more organized trough that brings severe weather to areas in the central and southern plains yet again and then as we go into the middle of next week we're more than likely going to continue to see a trend where we are at least talking about heavy rainfall that could lead to flooding but also the potential for more severe weather days during next week so buckle up it is going to be a busy next seven to ten days we'll keep you posted with the latest on the channel make sure you are subscribed down below and again we might be live tomorrow so make sure you're subscribed and click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates Guys, there is only two days left to get 500,000 subscriber merch at shopmaxvelocity.net. You can pick up any of these items with the top link in the description below. We still have our hat, t-shirt, beanie, mug, and also our sticker, again, available at shopmaxvelocity.net. Top link in the description below.